Hello 1P and welcome back to Solving Equations. Our goal today, I can solve an equation where there is an unknown value on both sides of the equal sign. So we're going to start by recapping what we did for solving for x um, in this one where there's an e where there's a variable on one side of the equal sign. So here's our variable over here. Now remember we have to get that term completely by itself to start with. So what's stopping this term from being by itself on this side of the equation? Now I hope you answered 10 because it's the 10 that's causing us some problems. Um, so we have to get rid of that 10 off that side. Now that's a positive 10. Uh, there's no plus in front of it, but we understand that it's positive when there's nothing in front of it. So to get rid of a positive 10, we got to throw some negatives at it. I get to throw 10 negatives on top of it. Remember, negatives kill positives, and so when I throw 10 negatives on there, they just disintegrate. But the problem here is, if I make something go way off this side, I've upset the balance of the equation, so I have to make it go way off this side too, in an equal amount. So I have to subtract 10 off that side as well. So I've subtracted 10 on both sides, which leaves me with negative 4 on this side. And on this side, I have negative 3x. And I have negative 4 over here because I've got 6 positives and 10 negatives. And when I put them together, I have 4 negatives. Now I have to split up these x's. I know that I have negative 3x's, and they're the equivalent of negative 4. And now I have to split them into equal parts. So I'm going to split them into negative 3 equal parts, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, but what we're doing is dividing by the coefficient of x. So if I divide by negative 3 on that side, I have to do exactly the same thing on this side. Remember the golden rule of algebra, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So on this side, negative 3 divided by negative 3 is just 1 and we have that x there. Now we don't have to write 1, in fact I'd prefer if you didn't. If you did, it's not a big deal, but negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. Now on this side I've got two negatives. Two negatives make a positive, so I'm going to uh, write this as 4 thirds. Now you can divide that out if you want to. You can pull out your calculator and type in 4 divided by 3, uh, but I would honestly prefer that you just left it as 4 thirds. Okay. Now, sometimes we have equations that have variables on both sides of the equal sign, uh, like this case here. I've got variables here and variables here, so I can't just get my variables by itself. So here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to choose one side of the equation to be my variable side, or I like to say the home of the variable. And the other side of the equa equation is the home of the constant. Now remember, this is a variable term and this is a constant term. And so we want one side to be home of the variables and one side to be home of the constants. Uh, so we're going to pick a side to get the variables on, the home of the variables. If one side already has only variables, get the variables off the other side. In other words, um, this is our home of the variable. Uh, so this variable is going to stay here. It's, um, it's where it needs to be, which means that if I look at the other side of the equation, it's the home of the constant. So I'm going to call this the variable home. And this side is the constant home. And it helps if you put um, put that above it. Just put a C and a V above the side of the equation uh, so that you keep straight where you're getting, where you're putting things. Uh, now, we look at this one. Since this is a variable home and this term has a variable with it, it's home, it's safe and sound. We're going to leave it there. Now, over on this side, this is my variable term. And since this is the uh, home of the constant, the variable term does not belong. So we need to get rid of these seven x's that are on this side. In order to get rid of seven x's that are positive x's, I have to throw seven negative x's on top of them. And remember, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm going to put seven negative x's over here too. So here's what we've done. We've subtracted 7x seven on, seven on this side and subtracted 7x on that side. So on my next line, these are gone, and I'm left with just negative 9 on this side. And on this side, if I put 4 positives with 7 negatives, I get 3 negative x's. 
And the last thing I have to do is split these up. Remember, take a look at your const, uh, your variable term and divide by the coefficient of the variable. So I'm going to divide by negative 3. What that does is it gives me negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. We're always dividing something by itself over here so that it is always going to be 1, which is good because that's we want to know what 1x is worth. Now if I divided by negative 3 on this side, I have to divide by negative 3 on this side. And negative 3 divided by, or negative 9 divided by negative 3, first of all we know it's going to be positive uh, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive and 9 divided by 3 is in fact 3. And we don't actually need that positive out in front there, but now we have our x term completely by itself. Now, if we wanted to do a little check of this, I could take a look and say, okay, does, does that make sense? So I'm going to look at the left side of that equation right up here. This is what I mean by the left side. This is left and this is right, same as with your hands. Uh, if I look at the left side of this equation, um, I'm going to check to see if x actually is 3. Uh, 7 times 3 minus 9 is 21 take away 9. 21 take away 9 is 12. Now I gotta see if that works. I gotta see if this side of the equation and this side of the equation turn out to be the same thing. Well on the right side of the equation I also have a variable uh, but that variable is with a 4 so it's 4 and we're trying to see if x is 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. Now since this value of 3, that that 3, um, that value of x, made both sides be the same number, we know we got the right answer. I can say left side equals right side. And that is, in fact, the right answer. And it's a good way to, to check your answer. OK, now we're going to do another one that says solve for x. Now this one's a little bit more complicated because I have x's and numbers on both sides of the equations. So once again, we're going to pick a side to get the variables on. Usually I would pick to keep the x terms on the left. So I would call this the variable home, the home of the variables, and I would call this the home of the constants. Now it does not matter whether you choose left or right to be the home of the variable or the home of the constant. Um, this is just usually the way I do it. I would keep the variables over here and say that this was the home of the constants. So if this is the home of the variable and this is the home of the constant, I'm going to work left to right here. In the variable's home we have two negative constants. Uh, two negative constants do not belong in the home of the variable so we need to send them home. I'm going to add two to this side to make them go away. They're gone. But if I add two to that side I have to add two to the other side as well. So when I've added 2 on this side, I actually have 10x. And on the other side, I have negative 4x plus 42. Now looking at the, right, at the left hand side here, um, it is the home of the variable and now I have only variable terms in it. 10 has an x with it, so it belongs in the home of the variable because it's got that variable attached to it. Now when I look over here at the home of the constants, 42 is good, 42 is a constant, but this negative 4 has an x attached to it. That belongs in the home of the variable, not the home of the constant, so I'm going to add 4 x's on this side in order to make those go away. But once again, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side, so I go plus 4x on that side as well. And now I'm going to simplify, which is, uh, if I have 10x and positive 4x, I have 14x's uh, in the home of the variable, and in the home of the constant, I have 42. And now lastly, I have to divide both sides by the coefficient of the variable. We're going to split these up so that we can figure out what 1x is worth. And to figure out what 1x is worth, I have to divide 14 by 14 so that it goes to 1. But once again, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So I'm going to divide this side by 14 as well. And um, 14 divided by 14 is 1, so I'm left with just x on this side. And 42 divided by 14 is 3. So once again, our x turned out to be 3. And we could do a quick check of the left side, right side. Let's take a look at the left side. Let's see if that 3 actually works. 10 times 3, that's what 10x means. It means 10 times whatever the variable is, and we 
we're trying to figure out if that variable is 3, 10 times 3 minus 2. Well, that gives us 30 minus 2, which is 28. Now I have to see if that value of x did the, makes this side 28 as well. So on the right-hand side, I get negative 4 times 3 plus 40. And negative 4 times 3 is negative 12 plus 40. Negative 12 plus 40 gives me positive 28. And now we can see that that works again. Left side equals right side. Give yourself a big check mark. Now right beside it, notice that I put the steps that we that we followed here. It says get rid of the constant term on the left. That's what we did here. Then we simplified by putting the stuff together, get rid of the variable term on the right. That's what I did here when I added the 4x to both sides. And then we simplified again and then divide both sides by the coefficient of x. So we're going to divide both sides by the coefficient of x. Okay, now let's try this again. We got a couple more here. I'm going to call this the home of the variable and I'm going to call this the home of the constant. So since this is the home of the variable, this constant here does not belong. So I'm going to subtract 10 there, and then I subtract 10 on this side as well. Now I simplify. These are gone, so I'm left with just 8x on this side. On this side, I still have these two x's, and the negative 8 and negative 10 together make negative 18. Watch your uh, integers on this. So now I look at the home of the constants because the home of the variables has just variables in it. So the home of the constants keeps this eight, negative 18. It's a constant, so it gets to stay there. Uh, but I got to send these variables packing. And so I subtract 2x on this side. Those are positive x's, so to get rid of them, I throw negatives at them. And I throw two negative x's onto that side as well. So on this side, positive 8 and negative 2 go together to give me positive 6. And this side, that negative 2 and the 2 are gone, so I'm left with just this negative 18. And now lastly, I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient of the variable, so I'm going to divide both sides by 6. What that does is it makes this go to 1x because I'm dividing 6 by itself. And so I have an x on this side, and on this side I have negative 3. I'm not going to check this one, but you could do a left side, right side check just the same as up there to see if you got the right answer. Now going on to the next question, I'm going to zip through this one. You might want to put this on pause and see if you can solve it yourself uh, and then turn it back on and see if you got the same answer as me. So if this is the home of the variable and this is the home of the constant, I want to get just variables on this side so I have to subtract 18 on both sides. And so this side, those are gone, so I'm left with just 2x. And on this side, I have that 4x, and then negative 9 and negative 18 together form negative 27. Now, this is my variable home, it's good. On this side, I have to leave only constants, so I need to get rid of the variable terms on this side has to be the home of the constant, so I got to get rid of the variables. So I'm going to subtract 4x on that side and subtract 4x on this side. Now I'm left with negative 2x on this side. On the other side I have negative 27. This isn't going to work out evenly because now I have to uh, divide both sides by negative 2. And this side is just plain x because negative 2 divided by 2 is 1. And negative 27 divided by negative 2 is just 27 over 2. Or you can change that to 13.5 if you divided. Okay. And that completes the lesson for today.